Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to this edition of Project TJ. Now, part of the build plan of Project TJ is to double lock it and fix up the ring and pinions. I've got the 4.56 set of ring and pinions um, and that'll counteract the 33s that I run on it. And it'll mean I can use six gear again and my crawl ratio will be really nice. But when you're doing that type of thing, that is the time to put in your lockers because you've got the diffs apart anyway. I'm not gonna do the diff set up in this. Uh, I figure you've got to know your boundaries. I don't have the tools to do the, the ring and pinion setup. I've never done it before. There's a lot of shimming and the like. I think I'd rather just take it to some guys that know and do this every day um, and they can set it up for me. But anyway. But I also went down the track of do I fit ARB lockers to it, the air lockers. I've had those before and they were trouble free. Uh, I think I got an air leak once with a hose and that was just nipping up a, the connection. Um, it, they just worked and they worked whenever I wanted them to work and they worked well. There's also the e-locker question and I thought, oh, I haven't had those before, should I go for those? However, after a lot of research, and there's a few uh, YouTube videos of guys that are in my local area that drive in terrain that I drive in, which is a lot of sandstone steps and the like, and they were stating that the e-lockers aren't locking up as quick as the air lockers and you've got to go like half a rotation of the wheel or something before it will lock in. And it was like, oh, I don't want to be in that situation because when you want these air lockers to work, you want them to work. And it's generally when you're in some technical area and um, you just want traction and you want it then. So we've gone down the air locker route again, mainly because, and not mainly because, but it pushed me into buying them, ARB had a deal on. And if you bought a front and rear air locker, they threw in the compressor. Now, this isn't the big double pump compressor. This is the model under that. They've got three models of air compressor. Now, I've had the, the base model before and it's tiny and it fits really nicely in the engine bay and it works for the air lockers beautifully. This model is the mid-range model and it allows you to pump up tyres. Now, I'm running 33s. I think this will be good enough for that. Um, I don't know, but I really like how I can package this into the engine bay once I had a look at it. Frankly, I was gonna on-sell this when I got it and put the money towards the big double pumper one that everyone seems to want. However, when I looked at how this packaged in the engine bay, I thought I might just see how this works because it fits so well. So time will tell on that one. I think if I was running 37s or even maybe 35s at a pinch, I may want the larger compressor. However, for 33s, I think this may do quite well. And it'll probably be better than the cheap air compressor that I've got that I did the review on. Um, and I've been quite happy with that. It, it pumps up the tires in a reasonable amount of time. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Now, with that, you got your air hose uh, that connects to the compressor and you also got this digital digital uh, air chuck which has got a digital readout on it um, and this is the part that connects to your tyres and this is a really nice piece of kit to get. Um, I was looking at those actually before I got all this and thinking oh I wouldn't mind that and I think that was about $170 by itself but anyway um, on top of all that you got a tyre repair kit. Now I carry around a really cheap version of this that I picked up from Super Cheap which is a local parts supplier and with one of these and an air compressor, I can I haven't been stranded with a puncher. And you can generally fix it on the side of the road. Um, I have had a really thick piece of um, stake go through the tread of a tire, and it did use most of the repair straws that you push in and pull out, um, and they're covered in a tar-like substance. However, it got me home, and um, then I could replace the tire because it was absolutely cactus. But this type of thing is a great thing to have in your vehicle um, and combined with a compressor will get you out of most situations. Not all, but most. Anyway, so I was pretty chuffed with getting all that. Um, it was like Christmas time bringing it all home. Today, we're going to hook up the compressor, mount it in the vehicle and hook that up. Um, and this is where our S-Pod unit's going to come in because it's going to provide a really simple hookup where all the switch wiring and everything's already taken care of in the vehicle. Um, and to help with that, 
I've bought an adapter harness from S-Pod and that's meant for the ARB compressor which means that it should be a really simple hookup. So let's have a look at where we're going to mount it in the vehicle, how we're going to do it and um, get this done. Now before we install the compressor we have to put the parts on it. Now the first thing I'll do is do the solenoids for the front and rear air lockers. Um, if you loosen this bolt off here you can swing the cylinder around um, to help you do that. The, there's two plugs here, I've already installed one solenoid so just undo that plug. That's a 5mm allen key and put some tape around the solenoid and screw that in. Now if those fitted the air cleaner just you pull out the plug screw this in that's done. Now the last piece that needs to be added is to pull this plastic bung out and if you weren't going to use this to pump up your tyres you just put a pressure switch with a bit of Teflon tape into here. However, because we're going to pump up our tyres in the air hose kit, you get a T-junction, the pressure switch goes into one side and a female air connection goes into the top. But we'll put some Teflon tape on all of that and install it. Now remember when you're putting these in, we're putting them into an aluminium or cast thread so they don't need to be hugely tight. And again, because we're run hitting the body of the pump, we can swivel this around to make it a bit easier on ourselves. the orientation to this where I think we need it and we'll do up the end bolt but we can alter, alter that once it's in the vehicle and now this is all ready to go in the vehicle So this is where we're going to fit it in the Jeep. Um, there's actually a tray under here and because mine's a right hand drive vehicle, my battery lives over that side. So we have this space here and I think in some markets there's an ABS module that sits on this tray. But it's the perfect place to put the compressor and the air hose will just connect here. So we just need to bolt that down with four bolts. Now I've set up the orientation for this in the, the Jeep, um, but I've pulled the tray out because it's going to be a lot easier to drill the holes and everything. So I've marked out where this compressor goes, and there's a base plate that also goes with it. So I'll mark out the holes for that, and we can drill that up. Now with this tray they've supplied some M8 bolts. Um, there's one that lines up with an existing hole in the tray. I'm going to put rivet nuts in all this, but I've just put a rivet nut in this hole that's existing so I can lay my plate on it so we can get a position. Now these rivet nuts are just like a rivet except they've got a thread inside them and they come in all different sizes. Um, they fit onto the gun, they screw on and you just put them on like a rivet. Um, just be careful you get them on fairly tight because if you don't they could uh, turn on you when um, you try to get a bolt out. So traps for the unwary. I had to pull the mount off the bottom of the compressor and bolt that to the ABS plate because I did, there wasn't enough room to get around it and then I had to um, bolt the compressor to the mount again. Really horrendous job because there's not a lot of room to get your hands around it but um, that's all bolted in now and quite solid. That's on rubber mounts too. 
So this is the wiring loom that ARB provides and um, it's quite a nice wiring loom. This goes to your battery, positive and negative. If we follow that along, they provide an inline fuse from the battery. Follow that along further. This is where it mount, mounts to your compressor. So we've got your compressor connection, front and rear locker solenoids, and your pressure switch on the compressor. And if we go further, we've got a relay that they provide. And then at the end of this part, we have a connector for your switch unit. Now, with switches, as I said, we've got an S-Pod, so with the ARB side of things, they provide this loom that goes to all your switches for the uh, compressor and lockers. We're going to use this S-Pod loom. You can see it's a lot simpler. Um, that'll just connect to this, this connector. We've got a red and black wire for the air compressor and then we've got an actuator wire for each solenoid for front and rear diff locks. So let's get all that fitted. So we'll just lay this loom out. So this is the S-Pod unit and wiring up is really simple and this is why we put this in. As you can see, we've got our relays for the six switches and our fuses sitting behind them. Um, we can change those fuses to whatever we desire. To wire this up, we'll be using switch one of the air compressor. So red to here, black to here, front locker to switch two and rear locker to switch three. It's a bit hard to hold the camera, but I'll wire that up and come back and show you. And as you can see, that's all our switch wiring completed. So we'll just put the lid back on this and we've just got to wire up the battery and we're finished. Now all of that wiring is now finished and we've connected that up to the battery. Now the only thing I have found is that in the S-Pod unit, because my vehicle is a right hand drive vehicle, switch one corresponds to the left hand switch inside. So I've just had to switch, switch the wires across to switch six, which corresponds to the switch closest to me in a right hand drive vehicle. Uh, the only thing I have to do under the engine bay now is to screw the relay down here. So I'll do that in a moment. Um, the only thing left to do now is to change these switches over. As you can see, these are the S-Pod switches. I don't have the S-Pod quick change thing, so I'll just use a screwdriver to prise the sides of these switches off. So that's got that switch off, and we'll put the air compressor switch on that, which is this one. and the front and rear air lock off switches. Front air locker. And the rear air locker switch. And that is it. I like the look of that. And of course we don't have the air lockers in at the moment. However, it is all wired up for them.
So that's all installed. Must admit, it's a really nice uh, discreet install. It was a bit of a pain getting the compressor and bolting it onto that ABS tray, um, but it all worked out well. The, the wiring loom was spot on. Putting it up to the S-Pod unit, I can see now why I've spent the money on the S-Pod. Um, the switches now inside, I've now got some switches that say something, because I just had blank ones before, um, and one actually works. But best of all, this is all I've got to carry now for my tyre inflation. And the fittings on these are absolutely gorgeous. They're all aluminium fittings, clipped together really nicely. You can use this gauge to deflate your tyres, but it's really slow. You're better off with uh, a bespoke tyre deflator. So that's it for today. Um, I've now got to arrange to get all the diffs redone and the airlock is put in. At least I've got all the compressor and everything wired up now. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, that's it for today, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.